Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, good afternoon, good afternoon, welcome, welcome, welcome to Anastasia Garrett Brook Dolly's World Channel. How are you guys this afternoon? I hope you guys are so far so good, having an amazing afternoon on this blessed Monday. It's very beautiful outside and hope you guys are out and about and those who are at school, work, whatever the means may be. I'm just hoping that you have an amazing positive day. Um, so yeah. I just came in just for just a, I always say a brief moment, but I always stay a little longer than I'm supposed to stay, guys. But I just came in this afternoon because I wanted to speak um, about a video that I watched uh, last night that made totally good sense. It made absolutely good sense. Um, the topic is I'm going to speak about is relationship that I seen in the video last night. Um, Paula, my awesome world. Hi, Paula. How are you? You know, um, I just wanted to come in and I wanted to give you kudos on your video last night that made good, totally good sense. It makes complete good sense um, in reference to relationships and how relationships can just fall so just fall just fall completely apart you know for a lack of attention a lack of understanding a lack of compassion a lack of trust you know what I mean and this hurts a woman when a woman is just not um, caress love care for cherish or whatever the means may be us as females we always want that 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 love that compassion that that cuddling, that holding, that caressing. I guess it all means the same thing. But um, I can sympathize of, you know, in your video, what you were saying last night that, okay, yo, you know, okay, like I've been dealing with this for X amount of years. Um, I'm completely, totally just over this and I have to make things better for me and my life to make things better for me and my children, our surroundings and everything. So I just wanted to come in and just speak a little bit about that, if you don't mind. I watched your video last night and yeah, it made it, it made really, it, you made really good sense of that. Like, let me just first and foremost, take me as an example. As you guys know, if you go in and if you watch some of my videos, I speak about um, relationships, um, infidelity, fornication, um, just a whole bunch of topics, just relationships period you know and when you give a woman a lack of attention when you have no compassion you have no trust no understanding and if first and foremost if there is no communication it everything just literally falls apart it becomes bitter it becomes sour and then everything just it crumbles and then you get to the point that everything builds up and then you're to the point that you had enough and I just want to sincerely say that, yeah, you made total good sense of what you were saying in your video last night, that if you're never there, if you're never there, yeah, not saying that you, Paul Awesome World, um, you know, saying that, you know, your guy, however long you may have been with him, might have been out there cheating. I'm not saying that you're saying that, but in relationships at some point when you're together for so long, you know what I mean? You're together so long, things do start to get a little bitter and things do start to fall apart and we do depart from each other at some point because that lack of attention, that lack of love, trust and understanding, as I quote unquote said, you know, it's not there. And then another thing, if you're not there, you're constantly going all the time. I know me as a female, I know if my guy is going all the time, you're never there. Yeah, I'm going to take it as, yo, what the hell is going on? You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't touch me or, you know, he doesn't love me. Is there somebody else in the picture? You know, your mind just, just gets so bottled up. Like, your, your mind just goes all over the place. If you were going to the videos that I've made in the dark uh, setting um, where you don't see me, but you see a little red dot that surfaces all over the screen, that video is called my mind 
just all over the place. And I tell you bits and pieces about why my mind is just all over the place. It just surfaced all over the place. So I can, again, sympathize with what you're saying, Paula, because I was in a relationship that I was in for nine years. And let me just say, I knew it was wrong, but in the beginning, I did not know. As I quote unquote again said in the video that I made that I was in a relationship with a married man. And I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't mind saying it because, you know, now I could sit back and I could laugh about it. But in the beginning, I, you know, it, I took this shit like to heart that I fell in love with this man. And three years that I was with this man in the beginning, when I was with this man, I had no idea whatsoever this man was married. It was always, he would just make up an excuse. In the beginning, I, you know, I didn't too much pay too much attention. Like, you know, I would say, babe, you know, are you going to stay the night? Oh, babe, I can't stay the night because I got to go to work tomorrow. But I promise you I'm going to stay. You know, I said, okay. So, I, you know, I just overlooked it. And... I would say to him, you know, because he always he always stated to me that he had his own place. But then when he came in with the two boys, his son, which is Marvin and Junior, I don't even care anymore because I'm not with the dude anymore. So I don't even really care if, you know, well, I do care, you know, but it's just to the point that I just start putting pieces together after a few years. Like, let's give it a maximum of three years that I was with him. And I should have seen red flags then. But because of the, the situation with me losing the guy that I was with, Theodore, um, for 14 years, you know, I completely shut down from men, period, after I lost the guy I was with for 14 years. So I say this to say that, you know, you, you get to the point that you've had enough. You had enough. Like, you always gone. You're never home, you know. So when you come home, what is my mind supposed to think? What am I supposed to think? I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to, for me, Paula, I'm going to absolutely think that, yo, what, you know, is there somebody else? If you, is you getting some Kubina and that's the pussy guy, is that the pussy down there? Excuse me, guys, if there's any children watching, forgive me for the way I'm speaking, but this is me. This is how Anastasia speaks and I give it to you pure and raw. Okay. But at any rate, if there's any kids watching this, please click off the video, okay, and I sincerely apologize for that, for the words that speaks out of my mouth, but again, this is how I speak, but for me, I'm going to take it as, wow, every time I turn around, this guy's never home, he's never home, you know, and I'm going to take it as, are you seeing somebody else, or are you getting somebody else's Kudina? Because apparently it's like you don't have time for me. So how am I supposed to take that? I'm going to take that to heart that you are out there messing with somebody else. Paula, again, I'm not saying you. I'm not saying your own man or anything like that. I'm speaking about me first and foremost. How I would take it, you know. And then for me in the relationship, it had just got so crazy because I was so, so into this man. I had got so into this man, but something just told me to just start searching, seeking and finding out absolutely positively more about this man that I was dealing with because of the fact that I lost my guy that I was with for 14 years. It took me four years before I even started talking to any other man. It took me four years before I even got in a relationship with the other, another man. I was not even interested in another man at that point because I was still mourning the death of the guy that I was with for 14 years. I hope you guys follow me so far. And I used to work at a daycare called uh, Brightside Academy. And I was there for, you know, I was there for nine years. I was there for nine years. And, you know, I, I wasn't interested in nobody else because I had lost my guy. You know what I mean? And so there, there came along a spider, guys, that sat down beside her, which was me, you know, and uh, I met this gentleman, and um, it's, it's a long story, so I'm just kind of weeding in and out of it, because I don't want to carry the video too long. And um, through my girlfriend, <laughs> Jennifer, she's a white girl, and um, I met, met him through her. And sometimes I sit back and I say, I wish I never even laid eyes on that, that son of a... Mm. But... Things happen. It is what it is. It's over. We're done. We're finished, you know. And uh, so for a long time, I just shut myself off and, you know, 
one day uh, I was on my way to lunch, me and my girlfriend Jennifer. And so I was clocking out, but I was at the front desk and I was talking to the secretary. She signed down. She said, quick, I'll be outside waiting for you. And so I was like, okay. So in the midst of me going to lunch, he was coming in because he had to sign the clipboard to uh, wait for the teachers on the school bus. He signed in. I seen him every single day. Every single day he came in. Hey, hi, how are you? And lo and behold, she gives this man my number. Tell this man that, you know, hey, she's a single lady. She's looking for a boyfriend. Are you interested? And quote, unquote, as she said, he said, oh, sure, you know, give me her phone number. So she said, she asked him, are you married? He said, no, guys. She said, do you have a girlfriend? He said, no, guys. Okay. So she came back and he went back down on the bus and she came back and she was like, girl, come on, come on. We, you know, you, you wasting time for lunch. So I came out. So we comes down, he's sitting on a bus and we walk into the Chinese store to go pick up our, our order. She said, here, um, I got his number. You know, he told me to tell you to give him a call. I said, you got who number? She said, the bus driver, the school bus driver that comes in here. You know, Martha, I think he speaks a foreign language. And so she tried to speak like him. I said, well, maybe he's probably from Haiti, Ghana, something like that. She said, no, I think he's, he told me he was from Haiti. And he said he was a single man. He doesn't have a wife. He doesn't have a girlfriend. Guys, it was all bullshit. It was really all bullshit. Okay, but again, I did not know that. Okay, I may have to come and put part two of this, uh, this topic here. But at any rate, I met him and time went on. And um, so I finally gave him a call. Maybe about took me about three or four months before I gave him a call. See him every day, come to the school to pick up the teachers, sign in the clipboard. Hi, that, that's as far as it went. One day I decided to give him a call. Okay, so let's take it from there. We're going to move it further. So anyway, we start seeing each other and this, this, that, that, and the other. And um, he wanted to come and see me one day. So I was like, no, I'm not really sure because I just, you know, lost my boyfriend. And, you know, you know, he said, you just lost him. How long ago was it that you lost him? I said, oh, just about four years ago. He said, Martha, that's four years ago. This is now. That was the past. This is the future now. And I was like, yeah, well, so you say, like, I was with this man for 14 years. So um, I'm just not over him yet. So, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, time went on. We talked on the phone whenever he had time or whenever I had the time or whatever. So we start dating. We start dating. We start dating. Time progress. We start dating. I'm moving it along fast because I don't want the, the camera to cut off for me. And one year, it became one year anniversary for me and him. Then it became two year anniversary for me and him. Then it became three year anniversary for me and him. But I just kept questioning that. Babe, you know, we, we've been in this relationship for three years now. When are you going to invite me over your house? Or when are you going to invite me over your apartment? He says, oh, baby, I'm going to invite you over soon. I'm going to invite you over very, very soon. And he said, but I work all the time. And I said, you're a school bus driver. I see you every damn day when you come to the school to pick up the teachers and stuff. You come in the morning, you pick the teachers up, you take them to the after school, take the kids from the daycare to the schools. And you, you come back at 2.30, you pick the teachers up, you sign the clipboard, and you go take the teachers to pick up the after schools, and you bring them back to the school. So how much can you be working, you know? And um, to make a long story short, um, it just never got to that point that he would stay the night. So I start putting two and two together. And one night we were just, uh, one, one evening when he got off of work about seven, eight o'clock, uh, my children, they wasn't here. We was just, you know, laying there watching TV and this, that, and the other. You know how females do, you know, <laughs> a man and a woman, they do what they do. They get it in. And we, you know, we, you know, we did what we did. We got it in. So he's knocked out Konto sleep. The ring, guys. The ring. It's what told on him. Three years now. I, I, I moved it along fast. Three years. I'm going to show you how this went. Let's just say this is the wedding band. This is the other ring that placed in the front of it. But you couldn't see the wedding band. Okay? You couldn't see the wedding band. Because it was one of those uh, rings that he had his whole complete name across it. And the ring was, was just a little bit too big for him. And, um... So I'm laying there and I look and I see this ring behind it. And I'm like, hmm? I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is he hiding a wedding ring from me? So I didn't say anything. 
and I looked. He was sleep so hard, I just pushed the ring down. Lo and behold, guys, it was a band. It was a wedding band. You know, Anastasia, what I did. I got to come in with part two of this shit. And I woke him up and I said, yo, wake up. I mean, why you wake me up? I just want to get a little bit of a nap out before I you know, go home and this and that. I said, yo, you married? You married? He said, but we don't, no, 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 I'm not married. What, what, what are you talking about? What, what are you? I said, take the ring off. There's a band in the back of your ring. So you hid this from me for three years. Okay? All right. So lo and behold, we argued. I put him out. We broke up. I didn't see him, you know, well, come to my house for about a year. Um, he kept calling. I, I just kept denying the calls. I wouldn't let him come to my house. I see him every day as far as the, picking up the teachers and stuff from the school. And anyway, we're going to get back to that later in the second segment of it. We're going to go back to you, um, Miss Paula Awesome World. So I can sympathize with what you're saying. Enough is enough. I have taken more than I can stand. And when you're not happy in a relationship, it's going to make you so miserable every day of your life. It will make you miserable, you know. So I understand that, you know, you just, you know, you just got fed up. You just got tired of it. And so you just let go and let God, you know, yo, take your stuff and you have to go. You're not going to deprive him of his children because those are, those are his children. But as far as you and him, like you said, it's a dismiss. It's a rap. You were never hardly here. You were never here. You know, so what was in this what was in this relationship for us but our children whom we love, you know. But it just gets to the point that sometimes in life you you tend to fall out of love and you you're not happy, you know, but you sometimes we just hold on because of our children. Not saying you, Paula, so please understand the video, sweetie. You know, we fall out of love and uh we stay in it, you know, for our kids and stuff like that. But when your mind, body, and soul had had enough, you say, yo, I can't do this anymore. And I understand what you're saying. You just could not do it anymore. And you just wanted to just move on with your life. You know, you want to have an amazing life. You said he didn't, you know, he didn't want to, um, how would you use that word? He didn't want to, um, I know you said something about your YouTube channel. He didn't want to have support with you with your YouTube channel and stuff like that. You're getting your grind on. You, you know, you know, you're trying to make things happen. You have a job. You know what I mean? You you like you said you do this for a hobby, you like it, but he wasn't supporting you in anything. And then you made a statement that said something about he said, Yeah, that's why they said what they said or something. Or some something to that effect, honey. But um yeah, I totally understand you. And if you're not happy in a relationship and you feel as though it is bitter, it is just not happening, it's not working anymore, you have the right to move on with your life. You have the right to dismiss what's going to make everything bitter, you know, and you did that. You moved on with your life, now you guys are depart, but your, ki your kids and him would still remain the same, because I'm, I'm sure, you know, that you would never deprive him from his children. And that's that's amazing. That's good. You know, but when the man and the woman just can't make it happen, the best thing to do, sweetie, is just to move on with your life because that's what I did. You know what I mean? I went on with my life because I knew in the end I was not going to be the one that was going to win this man because this man had wife, this man had kids, this man, he had babies out of wedlock. You know what I mean? So... Where was I going to come in there? What was I going to fit in there but just be a piece of meat when, that he want, when he wanted? And I deprived myself from him, just like you said. It got to the point you said, yo, fuck that. I ain't having no sex with him. You stop having sex with him. You had the right to do that. Because in our minds, in our minds, we're going to positively think things that they're doing out there. Like, I don't know if you're fucking somebody else or whatever you may be doing. But whatever you may be doing, you ain't doing it with me. And that's what I did. I deprived myself from him for at least a whole year and some change before we actually broke up. And he always say, you know, you're not giving me no. We're not having sex. We're not doing this. We're not doing it. No, we're not. No, we're not. Because you you literally got caught. You got caught about the situation about screwing the girl that proclaimed that the baby um, is his. Until today, I might have exaggerated it a bit. But till today, I still truly believe that that is his child. 
she, you know, came out and said in the end that it wasn't his child. She said that her and her boyfriend got back together. She said that those children was her boyfriend that she had broke up with. Okay? She said that it was just all a fling with the man that I, quote unquote, was in love with, whom didn't love me. I was just a piece of meat. Just like that one was a piece of meat. That one was a piece of meat. Infidelity, fornication, he did on his wife. And yes, I do take the blame. After three years, when I found out the man was married, I should have just walked away. But it was too late. I was in love. But baby, everything just started coming out the closet, Paul, about this man. And I said, you know what, Martha? If you love him, love him enough to let his ass go. Because if you don't, you're going to regret this. Because you might wind up with some shit that you can't shake. And guess what, girl? I prayed on it. I prayed on it. And God gave me word to say, let him go. You love him enough, let him go. You don't want to destroy your life. And I'm saying to you, you know, I think that you did the right thing. I think you made the right move of just absolutely departing this relationship. Because all it was going to do was just add misery to your life. And us as women, we don't need that, honey. We're beautiful women and we know we, we may be a little chunky, you know what I'm saying? But we're beautiful women and we ain't got no problem trying to find a man. But what I won't stand is a man to manipulate me, violate me, walk over me, crumble, ever crumble my heart again. Because that's what this married man did to me. So I've been there where you are or what you're going through, okay, or what you've been through. I've been there. And I said, you know what? I love you and I love you enough to let your ass go. I said, because if I don't... You're going to get me in some serious fucking trouble. You're going to get me in some serious trouble. And I was not going to fuck down like that. So I let this man go. And I say again to you, Paula, um, awesome world, kudos to you, honey. You you know, you want success in your life. You know what I mean? You want, But I understand as far as your guy is concerned, you want love, trust, understanding, compassion, and all the above. And like you said, he was not giving it to you. So you shut him off. When you know, when you shut a man off from his Kudina, honey, he feels some type of way about that. That's your Kudina. That's your, that's your stuff. That's your pride and joy down there. And you had the right to shut him off because you didn't know. He wasn't home. You said he never stayed home. So you didn't know what he was out there doing. You know, not saying that your guy was doing anything. But I know, again, me as a woman, I know I will be thinking all kinds of shit. So I just came in to just, you know, speak a little bit about the relationship, you know, the topic that you were speaking on last night. And again, kudos to you. I commend you to be a stand-up woman, you know, a positive woman, you know. So I hope you love, you know, success and happiness in your life. Again, guys, I just want to come in and speak about this uh, thing about a relationship and speak um, in reference to what Miss Paula Awesome World spoke about last night. So again, girl... Do you, do you, don't let no discrepancy, no obstacles, no obstacle, obstacles stand in your way. My words are getting tired. Obstacles stand in your way. Make your life a success. Make you happy. Because if you don't make you first and foremost happy, what, what you got? What you got? So guys, again, if you guys should understand this video and if you should like this video, and if you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please leave it in the bottom and I will reply back to you immediately. So on that note, kudos once again to you, Paula Awesome World. I wish you all the success in the world. Again, this is Anastasia Garadelli's World coming into you this afternoon on YouTube on this Monday glorious day. Lord, I thank you for your blessing for waking me up this morning. Because I ain't letting no man shut me the fuck down, girl. Okay? And I know you ain't going to let Nan shut you down. All right? So on that note, guys, have an amazing day. Have a blessed, positive day. And let no hurt, harm, and danger come against you. Again, do not let any obstacles stand in your way. Because us as black women, we're beautiful, and we ain't got no problem finding no man. Stay blessed. Stay positive, And have an amazing day. Holla at y'all later. This is Anastasia Garadelli's World, and I hope that you like and understand the video. So if you should like this video and you understand this video, please thumbs me up, guys. Don't thumbs me down. Hit the notification bell, guys, and come on in the room with Anastasia Garadelli's World and subscribe me. What are you waiting for? Have an amazing day, guys. Bye-bye. Enjoy your afternoon.